So, last week was a bad week for Virginia Governor Ralph Northam. At the start of the week, he was just another governor. By the end of the week, he had managed to piss off pretty much everyone. How does a career politician self-destruct this quickly? Well, it's time for some Roasted Opinions. Let's go back just a bit to 2017. Ralph Northam, at that time the lieutenant governor of Virginia, was running against Ed Gillespie, the former head of the Republican National Committee. Gillespie has a history of two things, being a mover and shaker within the Beltway, and not quite winning elections. He isn't the candidate which I would have chosen, just for those reasons, but hey, I'm not from Virginia. The campaign featured some particularly nasty advertising. Gillespie was repeatedly tarred as a racist and could not come up with an effective response for this accusation. The Latino Victory Fund, a left-wing political action committee, ran ads depicting Gillespie as a terrorizer of immigrants. The ads featured a pickup truck with a Confederate flag, a reference to Gillespie's signature on a petition to preserve Confederate war monuments. It was an effective ad campaign despite the fact that the ads were pulled. Northam defeated Gillespie by almost 10 points. Remember that. Virginia elected Northam over Gillespie because Northam accused Gillespie of racism and that accusation was enough. Let's fast forward some, shall we? A couple of weeks ago, the Virginia House of Delegates debated the Repeal Act. Now this act is one of a spate of bills proposed in numerous states to allow late-term abortions. This bill, proposed by Delegate Kathy Tran, would allow abortions even during the labor by Delegate Tran's own admission. The reasons for permitting late-term abortions would be expanded to include risks to the mental health of the mother. Governor Northam made an appearance on WTOP and FM radio station. During the interview, the governor stated the following. Um, And it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities, there may be a a fetus that's non-viable. So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion. You heard right, folks. The governor said that the decision to abort could be taken after the baby is delivered, after the infant is made comfortable, and after the infant is resuscitated if necessary. Naturally, there was a visceral response by the pro-life movement to that statement. Northam backed away from the statement the next day, saying that it was taken out of context. Hmm. Now, in recent political history, there has been a trend towards dredging through people's histories to find the most egregious actions they've ever taken. Once found, the evidence of those actions is spread all over social media, and the typical result is that the reputation and potentially the career of the person in question is devastated. We can see that sort of response in the Covington aftermath, to cite a recent example. Big League Politics, a right-wing website, published a photograph which was found within Northam's yearbook from medical school. The photo depicts two students, one in blackface and one dressed in full Klansman regalia. One of those students is Ralph Northam, according to the report. It went viral just as fast as Northam's statement about post-birth abortions for deformed fetuses. Northam first apologized and then retracted his apology by stating that it was not him in the photo. He then admitted that he had dressed as Michael Jackson in a moonwalking competition and applied chew polish to his face to do it. But that was it. Is this an example of personal responsibility or even good political sense? Um... No. Just, no. In the interest of being honest, I admit that I am both pro-life and anti-racism. Northam, who isn't my governor, has been revealed as an advocate of late-term abortion, post-birth abortion, and in at least one, possibly more than one past instance, a racist. He has been condemned by people across the political spectrum who are demanding his resignation as they should. Setting aside the racism, which practically everyone across the political spectrum has condemned, Northam's position on abortion is revolting. Late-term abortions are abortions in which the fetuses are viable outside of the mother's womb and yet are terminated. 
That's sickening enough for me, but what Northam described in his statement was a post-birth abortion. Post-birth folks, as in killing the infant after it has been delivered, made comfortable, and resuscitated if necessary. There's a word for that in English, an old word, murder. It's bad enough that the example which Northam used was of a badly deformed infant, but Trans Repeal Act would allow abortions for the sake of the mother's mental health. As in, there doesn't have to be anything wrong with the fetus if the mother's mental health will suffer. This act will allow the fetus to be aborted when it can survive outside of mother's womb. How the mother's mental health, apart from any physical health issues, would have any bearing on the survival of a healthy fetus is beyond my understanding. If one couples the statement Northa made with trans admission that the abortion could be conducted when labor has already started naturally, for the sake of the mother's mental health, a chilling possibility arises. Under this law, would it be possible to conduct a post-birth abortion of a healthy infant for the sake of the mother's mental health? Virginia, what the hell? As for Northam's past racism, the photo was published in a yearbook 35 years ago. I'm sure that the yearbook still existed in 2017. Gillespie's campaign at least should have found and published the photo during the campaign. Every political reporter worth their paycheck that is covering a race is supposed to be digging into the candidate's past to look for things like this. It's called vetting the candidates, and it helps to keep the voters from electing someone eminently unsuited to public office. Who was covering this race? Who was doing opposition research for Gillespie? You mean to tell me that neither of those groups could have turned up either his support for late-term abortions, which are condemned by more than 80% of the American population, or this blackface photo? Northam is ignoring demands to resign. I wonder how that sits with Justin Fairfax, the lieutenant governor, and just the second African-American elected to statewide office in Virginia history. Virginia elects governors and lieutenant governors separately, rather than on a joint ticket. That means that Fairfax won his office on his own merits. He's a Democrat, and I do not agree with his positions on most issues, but I believe that Virginia would be better served by having him as a governor than Northam. Oh, for the love of Mike, what is going on in Virginia? Governor Northam, if you happen to be watching this video and you haven't resigned your office, I join my voice to the many voices sounding from across the whole political spectrum. Resign. Admit your mistakes. Tell the people of Virginia that you are stepping away from public office to reassess your actions and positions and hang out your shingle again as a medical doctor. I suspect that you will be able to find enough patients to resume your career as a physician. Although you may receive some static from those who wonder how a pediatric neurologist can hold the positions that you do on abortion. Do the right thing. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell.